ride. Happy cow. Hi, I'm Ken Spector with Happy Cow, and I'm here with Chef AJ. Hi, Ken. Hi, Chef AJ. And she is the author of a book called Unprocessed, and she is the creator and founder of this wonderful event called Healthy Taste right. of L.A. We're in our fourth year now. We've done eight events so far. Fourth year. Yep. Terrific. You were actually vegan in this picture yeah, over it's here. It's interesting because I used to weigh 180 pounds as a non-vegan, and when I went vegan, you know, you do lose a little bit of weight when you give up animal mm -hmm. products, mm -hmm. and I got down, you know, about 15 pounds to 165, which, you know, is still overweight mm -hmm. and then I realized I was really eating a junk food vegan diet with yeah. uh sugar and oil and flour, just a lot of uh, baked goods and pastries, not really eating any fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And when I switched to that diet to a whole food plant-based diet without sugar, oil, mm -hmm. salt, I was able to lose over 30 mm -hmm. pounds. Terrific. I was really intrigued by your cooking class. I actually went to a, it was, I forgot, what, it was a magazine, the premiere of a new magazine, the Vegan Health and Fitness right, magazine. Health and fitness, right, right, and I attended you at a, a cooking class right. where you were showing it, people how to do this SOS diet that right. we're hearing so much it's about. It's SOS free, because we're promoting- SOS free a, diet. Yeah, right, because we're promoting a, a whole food plant-based diet free of SOS, sugar, oil, and salt. Right, right, right. And uh, it, it was really interesting, some of the ideas that you've come up right. with, uh, perhaps you didn't come up with them, but you, you right. practice these exactly. type of, of cooking. Of, of perfected it. There's a lot of yes. chefs that are also doing it. Kathy Fisher, Caitlin May, Ramses Bravo is an expert, mm -hmm. and I've just perfected it to, to suit my palate. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, and let's talk a little bit about your diet. What do you eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Let's go through a menu for people, okay. because a lot of people want to know about this, this right. salt, oil, and sugar-free right. diet. Okay, so, you know, as extreme as it sounds, when you think about human history, our ancestors ate an SOS-free, vegan, vegan, predominantly plant-based diet throughout most of human history. Mm -hmm. We weren't eating salt. Salt was a rare commodity. It was actually used as salary. That's where the word salt comes from. So we weren't eating salt. We weren't eating processed food. We weren't eating refined sugar. There's no agave in nature. There's there's no brown rice syrup in nature. There's, you know, no sucking at in nature. So people weren't eating refined sugar, and they certainly weren't eating refined oils. Mm -hmm. They weren't eating... Cavemen weren't eating coconut oil. They weren't. They were not any coconuts there, and they didn't have tools to open them. So we weren't eating sugar, oil, salt throughout most of human history. So it's not really an extreme idea. It's really going back to what our ancestors ate throughout most of human history. Mm -hmm. So what do I eat? I eat fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, with a little bit of nuts and seeds. So for breakfast, I eat vegetables. And I know that sounds weird, but if you travel anywhere other than the United States, you do get served vegetables and breakfast. In Japan, we had rice and vegetables and salad and miso soup for breakfast. When I was in Mexico, we had vegetables for breakfast with beans and rice. So I eat vegetables. That doesn't mean that's all I eat for breakfast. Like today, we had a big event. I needed more food. I ate about a pound of steamed vegetables. Today, it happened to be sugar snap peas, often as kale. And then I ate my oats. I had some steel cut oats with fruit. What do you put on? What do you put on these vegetables? Well, okay, so sometimes I just eat them plain. Sometimes I put on a delicious dressing. Often I use tahini or sesame seeds as the base. Some days I just squeeze a lemon or lime or use some flavored vinegars. Anything mm -hmm. but sugar, oil, salt. Right, right. So it's added oil. I mean, tahini well, has plenty of oil. Right, it's true, but but it's 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 in its whole food form. So it still has its vitamins, minerals, fight vitamins, minerals, fiber, phytochemicals, antioxidants, and micronutrients. Mm -hmm. So it is healthier than eating the processed oil. It's still calorie rich, but it's much more nutrient dense and I don't eat a lot of it you don't I don't eat a lot of fat so perhaps something like steamed broccoli with tahini dressing for breakfast. It's delicious. It's yes. absolutely, I love broccoli, so I'll eat that plain or with a little mm. bit of, I make a faux parmesan topping out of nutritional yeast and either nuts or seeds, and, and that also is very good on steamed vegetables. But actually, I've been doing this so long, I don't mind eating plain vegetables. I actually like the taste of them, because that's what I eat. And what would be a lunch idea if I were to cook for my friends? I, I love having big salads for lunch, mm -hmm. I, you know, big ones. I mean, I eat so much more food now that I'm not eating sugar, oil, salt. As far as volume, people look at me like they must think I have an eating disorder or be bulimic, but a big salad. And like we learned today from Chef Bravo, not a salad of lettuce, tomato, and cucumber. My salad has all kinds of greens. It has shredded raw beets and shredded raw carrots and purple cabbage and red onion and and anything else I can think of. And beans, always mm -hmm. beans. That's, that's what gives me satiation. And I love them. They're filling. Kidney beans, garbanzo beans, and then a delicious either low-fat or fat-free dressing. Mm -hmm. So that would be a, sal a great salad for me for lunch. 
often I have leftovers. So whatever was left over from the night before, I cook a lot of food in my Instant Pot, my pressure cooker, soups, stews, chilies. Often I'll have that the next day. So I eat a lot of food and it's really filling and it's really delicious. I cook for regular people, not just vegans, and they still like my food. So I was thinking like a tahini dressing, but with no salt, what would you add instead of the salt or to give well, it more of a flavor? Okay, so here's the thing, it, you know, good, better, best. So I don't use any salt and I really try not even to use things with any sodium, like low sodium miso or tamari. But what I recommend- Or seaweed? No, I do. I will use sea vegetables, kelp, and miso. But here's the thing. You know, once you stop eating salt, things like vegetables, especially greens, celery, they taste really salty. So I'm okay with no added salt. But what I tell people as they're transitioning, there's certain products out there like raw coconut aminos that have only 113 milligrams of sodium per teaspoon as opposed to salt, which has 2,300. You could have you could have 24 teaspoons for the same amount of sodium as one teaspoon of salt. You'll use a lot less. So I'll suggest things like raw coconut aminos, low sodium miso, which has 110 milligrams of sodium per teaspoon. You know, using sour can often help you not miss the salt. We have taste buds for sweet and sour, salty, bitter on our tongue, and the sour is next to the salt. So when we use lemon juice, lime juice, vinegar, the zest of the lemon or lime, we can sometimes trick our taste buds thinking we had something salty. Mm -hmm. Salt is the hardest thing for people to give up. People always think they're sugar addicts or they're fat addicts. It's really easy to cook without oil. There's so many substitutes in baking and in cooking. You don't need to use oil to saute vegetables. You can use water mm -hmm. or, or, or vegetable broth or wine even or fruit juice or vegetable broth. And for sugar, I was a pastry chef for four years at Sante, the executive vegan pastry chef, and I used dates to sweeten everything or fruit. So, sh so oil and sugar is relatively easy, but people do miss the salt. So. As they stop eating salt, it takes about 30 days to neuroadapt. They actually can prefer the flavor of the whole natural food. But salt is really hard for people, especially people that eat out, because you're not going to get salt-free food at a restaurant. You're just not. Right. And uh, Chef Ramses was talking about, like, what, granulated or um, garlic as well as onions, right? right? Well, that, that helps. He, he does a lot of interesting thing with using different kinds of onions in a recipe or layering. And it just this, these are kind of advanced culinary techniques. Mm -hmm. But I say salt is the hardest for people. That's why I'm not as strict as Dr. Goldhammer with the people I'm working mm -hmm. for, provided they don't always have high blood pressure. So I do allow them to use small amounts of miso in, in this low sodium uh, raw coconut aminos if, if that's what it takes to get them to eat the healthy food. Just not to add the salt. Does that make sense? Oh, not to sure. cook with it. You make so much of your food, I know this, in a right. pressure cooker. I do. What should people be looking for in terms of what pressure cooker to buy? Well, it just depends on the person because sometimes people are uncomfortable using nonstick. It, I'm not. I actually have one that's nonstick, one stainless steel. If they're not uncomfortable using nonstick, the Cuisinart is probably the most affordable one. When it's at Costco, it's $69. Does, does it have Teflon? I don't know if it's called Teflon. It's nonstick. Some people are not comfortable with that. My understanding was that, that as long as it's not scraped, it's fine. But again, a lot of people are. So if you're worried about that, you can buy the stainless steel insert or you can buy the Instant Pot, which has a stainless steel insert. But people always say, you know, I've been vegan for 36 years and they say, I can't follow vegan diet because I don't have enough time, enough money. But with a pressure cooker, you get dinner on the table. I make delicious soup, stews, and chilies in 10 minutes. And because I'm buying my grains and beans and lentils in bulk for 49 cents a pound, it's really, really inexpensive. So it's really revolutionized the way I cook because I'm a working person, I'm busy, and even though I know how to cook everything, you know, from scratch, and crock pots are great too. They t they're about 20 bucks, but you have to plan in the morning what you're going to do. So I can get home from work late, run to Trader Joe's next door where I live and have dinner on the table in less than a half hour and a really hot, healthy, delicious dinner. Red lentil chili, portobello mushroom chili, split pea soup. And I, I mean, I resisted it for years. And then when somebody really showed me how to do it, I was like, this is so cool. But apparently our grandparents had these and I didn't no. Yeah, and when you say it takes 10 minutes, doesn't it take a while for the water to get to pressure? So here's the thing, exactly. So it, 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 it takes 10 minutes once it comes up to pressure. Mm -hmm. But if you start with hot ingredients, so for example, in my red lentil chili, eight cups of water, if I boil the water first, it really doesn't take all that long to come up to pressure. But it also depends how much is in the machine. So when I steam my kale in the morning, it, it, it's almost instant to come up to pressure because there's a half a cup of water. But it's true, when I'm filling it 16 cups full, it could take another 10 minutes to come up to pressure. But think about it, even if it took 20 minutes to make dinner. Mm -hmm. I could be walking my dog while it's doing it. I could be taking a bath. So it, it's not, it's still a, it's still pretty cool if you ask me. Okay, terrific. And how can people find out about well, you? they can find out about me a few ways. They can go to my one of my websites, which is eatunprocessed.com. I teach culinary classes in Los Angeles and all across the United States, Canada, and Mexico. If they want to come to one of my events, if they go to healthytasteofla.com, we have at least four events a year throughout California, and they're really fun. We have the best doctors, the best chefs, and we show you not only why to do it, but how to do it. And we make healthy taste delicious. And you have this book. Uh, oh, yes, do you have I the book with you? 
out the on unprocessed book as well. And they can get it on my website or on Amazon. And you talk a lot about pressure cooking and all I, the stuff know, that we I just don't, talked about. I don't. Oh, you don't? Okay. Cooking. I didn't know about pressure cooking oh. then, So, but my next book will definitely talk about pressure okay, cooking. Well, I'll have to definitely check out a copy of this well, unprocessed. Maybe, you know, maybe you guys can come to one of my classes and like maybe even film the whole thing or just, you know, get a flavor for what I really do and taste the food. That would be terrific. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Appreciate Thank you, Happy it. Cow. Take care, Thank Chef you, AJ. So. Appreciate Thank you so it. Much. Thank you. Thank you. And this is Chef AJ. I'm Ken Spector with Happy Cow. Bye-bye. Bye. The Healthy Eating and Living Guide. Happy Cow.